Okay. Is this a very good opening? Yes. 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 Okay. <laughs> so, uh, okay. Uh, I will introduce our first keynote. It's for Grow. It. <laughs> Okay, uh, Toby will introduce the uh, Glow 3.0 and, okay, please prepare, uh, I do something for you, okay. So, Toby? Oh, yeah. projectors in our computers and it just works, you know? I mean, how many of you have attended like a, a free software conference like five years ago? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, and anyway, I remember very well that it took like 10 minutes to configure the external projector. Now it's just plugging it in and it works. Awesome. Anyway, let's get started. So, um, I'm Toby on the uh, bottom left. I'm from the GNOME Foundation, I'm from the GNOME Project, and I'm here to talk uh, about GNOME. And uh, let me first uh, ooh, let, me let me first start by taking a picture of you. So we are all excited for this conference, right? It's a great venue, and we have great hosts, and we have great organizers, great sponsors, and we are all excited about this conference. So I want you all to be uh, excited, and I want you to raise your hands and your arms and to throw them in the air and say, "Woo!" -hoo -hoo! Oh! Oh! Does that actually work? Yeah, that's right. So GNOME, and uh, more specifically GNOME 3, and more specifically GNOME 3.12. We just uh, had a release a couple of weeks ago, and that brought many new, well, visible and invisible things to our users, and hopefully to you. So um, the subtitle of this presentation being Design Decisions, Name Changes, Features. So, um, you know, I've uh, mentioned that a couple of times by now. And, um, oh, by the way, if you have anything to say, any remarks, or, uh, well, if you don't understand me well, then just make yourself hurt. Just raise your arms and um, shout in case I ignore you. Because uh, my native language is not English, neither is yours, I guess. So it might very well happen that I am speaking too quickly or... <laughs> <laughs> Or in case I fall, in case I suffer. <laughs> but anyway, see, you may uh, interrupt me any time, right? And uh, I appreciate that we could have more of a, uh, a discussion type of thing rather than me just last presenting things. Uh, so, there, I've mentioned that several times, and it might not necessarily be clear what that actually is. I mean, you probably sure all know the desktop environment that is, you know, start your computer. And then these uh, well windows appear, and this, these buttons you can click, and you can start your application. But all that is gone. That's fine. But GNOME um, also, well, is a community. Obviously, I mean, there's people behind that. Yeah. Well, GNOME also identifies these people that are working on this free software project. GNOME itself does uh, many more things than you can see when you just start your computer. Right? And there's technologies like. The heaps may be originated uh, within the GNOME desktop. We have uh, other projects that identify with GNOME that are not necessarily uh, uh, directly visible when you start with GNOME you know, desktop. And then we have uh, the first and foremost thing that you would see and that you would identify with in the desktop. We had GNOME released a couple of years ago. And, uh, well, I say it was a great success. People have mixed things about that. And we were working on improving that experience for now. And I think the base release, and 3.12, is, uh, well, the best Polish one. It has been the most successful one uh, 
so far. So if you haven't tried GNOME, you've done three in a while, try GNOME 3.12, it's actually easy. Thank you. What do you notice when you, when you storage your kernel? I would say, first and foremost, you would see it's elegant to know. It tries to be slick, it tries to be convenient, it doesn't try to get you So this is almost what it looks like. Right? People nowadays just tell me what to do. They use from their computer, they may use a browser, right? So this is what it looks like to search your own uh, desktop, fire up the web browser. It's a good web browser, by the way. It's the uh, GNOME web, it's called. And it's improved a lot over the last years. So if you were trying to quickly from back in the day and haven't had a chance to have a look or to try a new web yet, skip give that a try. Well then, you've started that application and it's nice and you can do all your uh, Facebook and Twitter well, maybe not in here, but that's what people usually do then. And then you want to start other applications. And this is what it looks like roughly when you, when you try to do that. So you have this uh, overview of uh, running applications, or rather, little of your running applications, and you have the option to start more applications, or to search uh, for content that you eventually want to access. The next thing you might notice when you interact with your machine is that you get notifications. That is, uh, your system has to tell you something. And you can barely see it on the bottom. And um, this is the new GNOME way of well, interacting with the user. And these um, notifications try to be smart in a couple of ways. One is that you can just turn them on. Just like now, when I have a presentation, I actually don't want any notifications. And that's really, really nice. And if you're busy, if you're like you're working, then you can tell the desktop well. I do not want to disturb, I just want to get myself done. because. I think this is one of the main philosophies, and I will cover that later, but uh, now before I forget. I think we try to enable you to get your stuff done. Because we think that you don't sit in front of your computer because you want to sit in front of your computer, but rather because you actually want to do something. Something other than, well, just sitting in front of the computer. Probably you want to work, probably you need to write a document, or you need to interact with some other uh, people. And we try to enable you to do that as efficiently as possible. So these notifications are smart, as I said. And uh, one <coughs> opportunity for you to realize is when you use the internet thing and you get a notification about a, a new message, then you can interact with that notification itself and apply it in line. So you don't need to fire up the application to do the internet thing. You can do it from, from within the desktop system itself. Again, enabling you to achieve your task at a very high pace, as a scale of When you're about to start one of those applications, from the activities of review, you can uh, just type away whatever you want to access or whatever you want to open. And you will see a list of things pop up. And this is actually one of the one of the features that struck me the most or I was seeing or as enabling me to work very efficiently. Because uh, I, for one, when I install a new system, the, well, the very first thing I do is configure terminal to be open on control alt t And I cannot remember the name of the application that does that. But I don't care because I just type shortcut in this activities overview. And it fires up the appropriate application for me to do that. Because it not only searches, searches the name of the application, but also um, other metadata that allows me to quickly find the relevant application. So this is great technology, allowing me to do things faster that I want to achieve in the computer. <coughs> we have just so much more. So there's uh, many new things. I can't iterate over them all, but I think GNOME, and GNOME 3 specifically, has achieved a lot, or, or has enabled many people to get the things done very efficiently. And, well, just our health system. I think if there's two success stories to GNOME, it is uh, documentation help and translation. And if we ran the health system, and it's just great. You can uh, not, you don't have to read a flat linear book, but rather you can click what you want and then you get an answer straight up. Just, just read it. And so, 
Uh, there's, uh, well, at every break there's many small things that you don't necessarily realize are there, but you just notice when compared to other, well, technologies, that the GNOME technologies are just much nicer to use overall. wall. So we have this brake system, and how did we get there, actually? We um, use our mature libraries. Like, GNOME itself is a couple of years old by now. Right? It's not, it's not the, well, not, it only has been around for quite a while now. And we've developed powerful libraries over the years. And with the GNOME 3 release, we've cut off old props. But only that APIs and these items that were not in use anymore. The core libraries in the very core of GNOME are still in, well, they have the very core not changed that much. So this is a proven technology. It's been used in, uh, in many other projects. It's not only the GNOME desktop that uses C4 or the GNOME library. And they're mainly written in C. But you don't have to, to write C code uh, in order to get a GNOME application. We have a technology <coughs> called Geoptic and Perspective that allows you to use the, the GNOME libraries from pretty much any language you want. It's actually pretty cool if you think about it. You just need a, an adaption, like wrapper layer, to your language, and off you go. You can get, you can use the all of the GNOME technologies from your language. And with that, we have enabled uh, Python, not only Python to use the GNOME library, but also JavaScript. And we have uh, applications written in both languages. Great applications, uh, make great examples of GNOME. So JavaScript has actually been uh, designated, be designated as the main language for new GNOME applications, and we have a few new applications written in JavaScript. And we hope that this will attract a few more people to free software and to GNOME. Because uh, JavaScript is a very popular language in the web context, and we hope to leverage this uh, potential to bring these people to free software and to GNOME. In, this, in a similar vein, we have a CSS-based theming, like uh, you can style your widgets with the CSS like uh, syntax. Again, hoping that this will increase our, our, our reach, our outreach. So if you're about to write an application, there's, there shouldn't be many hurdles to take. It should be relatively easy for you to just write a GNOME like, application and write a great community. And just yesterday we had a training on that as well. And I guess if you have, uh, have any questions regarding developing new GNOME like, like, applications, there's many people here to talk to you about. And you just, uh, uh, all of us are here for the whole conference and even after, and I don't think many of us fight. So we, we do have these powerful libraries, and you may have noticed um, that we do use uh, a certain like, facts um, using 3D technology. And we used to have uh, this so-called callback mode, because um, not every piece of hardware was or is capable of directly rendering 3D graphics, right? And still, <laughs> we're, uh, we're using Linux kernel, and we're pretty much um, dependent on the graphics driver support that the Linux kernel offers. So um, we used to have this callback mode, which is basically, which was basically the old term 2 experience. We now have got rid of it, and uh, we have, well, there's two pieces to this puzzle. The first is the more traditional experience for users that do not want to change. The second piece of the puzzle is 3D, the 3D graphics. We solve the, the latter part, the 3D graphics part, by using software rendering. So you will be able to use your GNOME, the GNOME 3 experience with pretty much every hard editor, which is great. Because uh, that, that enables us to focus on one, one experience, and we do not need to prep manage our user base. The second part, for those who do want have this whole experience, 
we have uh, this flashback or whatever you call it, which maintains uh, the old style of interacting with your computer, but with the new technology. So, um, why am I saying that? I'm saying that because uh, there's not so many reasons for you to not use GNOME. So if you want to use the old style of uh, interacting with your computer, you can still do it. If you have uh, hardware which is not capable of running 3D graphics, you can still do it. If you want to do it, you can try it out. We have uh, CD image release there. There's um, USB copyright sticks to be downloaded there. We also have um, virtual machine images. If you want to run it on your, on your PC uh, in a virtual machine environment. And, um, there's, there's so many ways you can get hold of GNOME. And uh, I'm very well aware of the fact that GNOME 3.12 has not been, well, it's not shipped by major distributors yet. So this is one way, well, these are uh, one of the many ways, uh, this is one of the many ways you can get hold of the latest and greatest GNOME 3.12. So if you can start your GNOME installation, you may not necessarily like everything, and that's okay. So, if you, well, want things to change, if it, if the way it presents itself to you does not work out for you, you may very well choose to just change what you see. And the very first way of doing things would probably be uh, installing extensions. We have this great website. It's called extensions.no.org, and it allows you to well, download, download and install and run an extension with a click of a button. So this, this website, you click the button on, on the extension, the extension, click the button, and then it downloads, installs, and runs immediately. It's just amazing. And if you like, do not want to, to use the extension anymore, you can click off like, on the very same So that's, that's great. There's like thousands, thousands of extensions there on that website. Actually, how much? Don't have a and latest uh, up-to-date number, but it's like massive. There's a great number of extensions, and the likelihood of someone else having experienced the issue that you have, um, well, the, the likelihood is, is uh, it's a great likelihood. So you may very well browse this website, search your extension, and install it, and see whether it helps you bring configuring your GNOME environment uh, so that it works better for you. The other the thing you can try is uh, use the tweet tool. Because, um, well, it bundles options that many people request and makes them accessible. People um, were claiming that no one would remove all these options from them. And it's just not true. Technically, it's all there. It's just a very, very well exposed, let's say. And the tweet tool helps to expose some of these things. Like font settings, if you want to change your font. Nobody really, actually, nobody really wants to do that, I think. And uh, back in the old days, when I've observed my father using this number, so he, well, accidentally changed the font size to zero. You can imagine the time. And then uh, everything was broken. So nobody really wants to do that, I think. But if you really do want to do that, you can find a thing. So, no three. A little bit of history. Back in the day, in 2008, uh, we had an initial presentation of the content. And this is done at Quadic, by the way. Quadic is our uh, main conference, our <coughs> annual conference uh, taking place in Europe. It's the known youth, youth and developers uh, European conference. And it's uh, usually a great event. It's pretty much the equivalent of the Gnome Asia Summit for taking place in Europe. And if you have a, have a chance to come, I invite you um, um, wholeheartedly to join, to join the fund. This year it will be uh, in Strasbourg in France. If you need an excuse to go to France or to Europe for that matter, and, uh, try, try to come to the Quadic. So the uh, initial, or from the initial presentation in 2008, we developed the you know, MP over the last few years. So it's quite a show already, as you can imagine. 2008 is uh, like six years. Uh, six years back. So it's been a while since it was introduced, the concept of it. And uh, no 3.12, you still not, I mean, you will not stop, right? You're constantly improving the way we can interact with our users or the way they use the interact with us. So this is not, you're not done yet. There's still, 
uh, we still have a way to go, and we still want to, to improve from numbers and from people. So how do we do that? How do we actually achieve all these great things we do? There's some, well, we do release it, right? We need to get the software out of the way. We need people to be able to install our software. And we, well, we want them to install it, right? So how do we uh, get some attention from our users to, to install our software? There's some um, certain, there's a few schools of releasing. One of these schools uh, teaches that you do policy based release. That is, uh, you say, well, I want to release whenever there is no block bug of a certain severity. And then you, you should be fine. What you also can do is to say, well, six months have passed, now we shift the software. Like purely time based. You can mark the calendar for the thing on you, and you just shift. Another, another approach would be to say, well, we have this list of features. We want this list of features to be complete, to be working reasonably well. It doesn't need to be perfect, it doesn't need to work reasonably well, and then we shift. So these are, and there's probably more, more um, schools of releasing. So this is just, uh, just an example of what you can do. Let's look at the history of it, and I will come back to that just on the very next slide. This is um, our release history. And if you observe that this currency, uh, you will see that we have been pretty stately releasing everything for the last year. And this is just shortened to the size. And that's great. That means that people know what to expect from them. That means uh, software vendors can actually adapt or they uh, can use they like, can uh, they know when to expect a new number. And they could, like for the last so many years. It's a, it's a great thing. It's a great team. And it's what it resembles is pretty much a six month release cycle, but we don't have such a strict time base. I mean, we want the news we do not want the news to be six months have passed, now they're free. This is not a great announcement, right? This is not a not great news to make. But we want to have said as well, we have this list of features, this set of features that you get now when you get the new jump. And so what we have really is a mix of a time based release, time based release with a feature based release and also policy based. We have a um, like every shop, there's reviews of open blocker bugs that need to get fixed before we can release stuff. That's right, and by now, I think it's, well, safe to assume that the six month release cycle is, has been adopted by the wider free, free software community. There's other projects of releasing every six months. And which is great, it allows great deal of planning. Of course, um, I've already mentioned that, but just for, for completeness sake. The news shall not be six months have passed. Now it's all <coughs> This is not great news. And it's, um, it's not exciting, right? Users are not attracted by the fact that six months have passed. They know that it's not happened. So, having the bigger changes in mind and keeping them, uh, well, working at a level that is uh, satisfying is a solution to that problem of boring six months. And which is what we have a feature base, a feature, um, we have this time based cycle uh, release tool with a feature and quality base. Yeah. So with that, we achieved uh, 3.12 on the end of March, which is uh, just a couple of weeks ago. And as I've said, multiple times now, I think it's a great release. It's uh, the most published one so far. And I hope I will be able to show a video of this release. Let's, let's hope uh, for the best. Can we have a sound? Is there anyone taking care of the sound?
wants to come jump me off. <laughs> well, this is the. I hope uh, that in five years, when I'll go to a conference, then this is another thing that just works. Just like the protector setup. Maybe uh, we have like smart tables that have an HDMI base or something. And all the sand for the audio. Thanks. That's very much. Sure, what? What we can do is, um, yeah, that, that's okay. all right. So we'll just do it like that. So um, now imagine nice, fancy music that, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we have this video produced by a, uh, by a great Danish dude. He's actually a newcomer to the community, and this is what he pulled off as his first very difficult thing. Yeah, and uh, he's using Blender to produce that video. It's just, uh, well, I'm, I'm killing him. All the, the sources of the Blender thing are online, so if you want to, you know, produce the next release video and get all the pain, you're most invited to do so. So, um, that's quite well. This is just going to talk about a new way of installing and managing your packages. And there's all the metadata attached, like rating and description and all that. Uh, great initiative by Richard Hughes. Actually, uh, the video, the sound is working, you would hear Karen's voice, which is probably much nicer than my voice. We have a new G edit with a new face, it's uh, more slick. And it's used to the, uh, the old G edit, and this is what you need to get into. This uh, video, the, uh, the new totem, if you know totem, and this is what it will look like. Then the uh, total application next to this one. This is the web browser, as I've said. It's a great piece of software right now. And if you have tried it in a couple of years, you should give it a try now. In application, a sound recorder. Where is the logic?
audio. It's actually, you know, the video in the middle of the presentation is actually good to get the people awake again and all. But now I'm afraid that you that you fall more asleep. So I'm sorry for the, for the bad experience. But, uh, well, as I've said, I hope that in five years that will be a problem. Huh? So I'm going to prove my talk. There is um, roughly 1,200 people involved in making 3.12 happen. And they've accumulated roughly 35,000 in the chain. That's a great number, right? While this sounds like a lot, there's still, like, um, well, room for improvement. Say. There's still lots of space uh, in our Git account table. So uh, you're more than invited, more than welcome to join the effort and uh, make the next film release uh, much more successful than this one. What we have done was uh, we pointed out by the video, which I have the pleasure to now read for it. Is um, the one of the things that's the known software, right? It's a way for you to install your application, unifying the experience of getting new software to your system. So, so far, it's like a relatively big thing, right? Every, everybody does it in a custom way, and the information is not necessarily the same. Things are named differently, you know? so this is a uh, great attempt to unify all that. So you have one. Generic way how to install it. IPR support, if you have one of those new fancy laptops which have an incredibly high resolution, like 2500 times 2000, so that the normal will work great. If you're, if you're living in the future already, you can try it away then. It's not there yet, and it's still, uh, there's still work that needs to be done, but you could use it exactly. And if you don't trust me that you know, through my fault has been an, an amazing release, you can uh, make, or maybe uh, trust others more when you when you look at And uh, one of the comments that the, the internet had was that no free my job fixed product then we have finally arrived for one of the most frightening innovations for and free my job was once or once was the guardian of the internet. So there's um well and we don't usually receive you know that or no that's the wrong uh, wrong way. It's, uh, it's not always the case that we receive uh, these or that we receive that we receive that great level of, of feedback. So um, it really is a great relief and I really hope that all of you will be able to just use it from their uh, distribution right away. So this is like GNOME software, what I was talking about, right? And it allows you FFS to have a, a unified generic way to have a look at the software and the description and the rating and the screenshot. So great news. There's uh, the new totem. So it looks a bit different, more simple, more intuitive, hopefully. That also means that there is a uh, new total application because totem now is video and only the video. This is an IPI support, you can see on the left hand side, the rectified series, and on the right hand side you see, uh, well maybe you don't see it on the back side. I can tell you, it's, uh, there's uh, many few pixels on the right hand side, or it's just way smoother, the pixels actually, the pixel count is probably higher, but it's uh, much smoother on the right hand side than it is on the left hand side. There's uh, Wayland, there's not so much to show here. Uh, this this will be the future, and we are lucky to be at the edge of that future. This shows both the web and the edit, and both of these interfaces have been revamped, and it should allow you to well use these applications in a much nicer, much more straightforward way. And, uh, yeah, if you haven't given them a try yet, do it. Especially web has, uh, has a web based browser which sees many features and is uh, similar to say the Safari on the Mac or maybe even Chrome, although that's a format. There's Maps, which if I am uh, correctly informed is written down to. So we have a uh, oh, mapping application and do it. And there's so many features, right? 
the, the list of changes, as I've said, is like incredible, incredibly long. Uh, just again, and then also, we haven't tried them 3.12 yet. What do we plan for the future? And uh, well, I've said that 3.12 has not been the last, last time release. There will be more. And uh, well, we are constantly trying to, to improve um, well, our desktop and the user experience. And we, allow, we, we strive for people to use their computer even more efficiently than what we can do right now. So um, one thing that we will hopefully achieve for the next cycle is system integration. That means uh, well, that we don't need to track the user session ourselves. It's always been a, a rather bigger hack. So uh, if we can get rid of that, then that's, that's cool. If we can uh, delegate functionality to low level libraries, that's great. That will be fine. A thing that has been on the roadmap for quite a while is uh, color city. And um, this is to enhance accessibility. So we at GNOME, we not only, well, not, well, we try to bring computing to as many people as possible. And we try to bring free software computing to as many people as possible. And that, is, that does not only include people who do not necessarily speak English, but also people who are not necessarily able to use the computer in ways we know. And some people might have problems with differentiating colors, distinguishing colors. And for these people, color thinking will be a way to use their computer, well, in an efficient way. And in fact, if I'm correctly informed, then if we get that done, then we are pushing the edge of accessibility of the software yet again. And um, I think at GNOME, at large, we have a very strong, very good accessibility story. So I think we bring free software to as many people as we can in the free software world. But um, I was told I need to rush on a little There's um, another great thing that will hopefully come is in run integration for like the desktop, but that mainly touches the illusion. Our email client, which has also received much more they love over the last few years. If you haven't tried to lose it in a while, you might uh, give it another try. It's it changed a lot, and the code base has been greatly reduced, like the size. Like, <coughs> so you may very well check the new solution if you have not done anymore. So, you know, um, there's people, right? It's, uh, it's, an, it's an example of the people that make them. And um, I have like 20 or so slides, so I will. Let's get right to the end. And uh, I would say that this is a, a map of people. It's been dated. It's a data though. The map is uh, a bit old. So if you have, well, if you want to, to get engaged and if you want to you know, help out in the new project, this would be one way uh, to update this map and render a nice map. And with that, um, I would like to close and thank you very much for your attention. And I'm very open to questions or comments. Any questions? Are you with me, Mums? Uh, hi, I, I love Linux. Um, uh, my question is, uh, is there any plan for mobile version of uh, Good Mood to combine a desktop and uh, mobile experience? Well, so um, there used to be a you know, mobile initiative, but... <laughs> It has ceased to exist. So I, I guess the sometimes our answer is no, but the longer answer is well, you can try to run that on you know your mobile device. It probably won't work that well, but you could give it a try. And if you you know if you want to make it work like much smoother and nicer on a tablet or a mobile device, then you're more welcome. More than welcome. Yeah. Uh, well, I think it's easy for people to accept and uh, the glue on the phone. Uh, rather than desktop, because in China most of people use Windows or uh, or, all, or all of the commercial stuff, uh, but they never realize the importance of freedom and uh, open source. Uh, so I, I do hope that in the future that uh, a, a project like Gloom can come into people's life 
uh, in China. Thank you. Yes, that's a very good suggestion. I'm, a, I'm not very knowledgeable in the field of medical devices, but from what I know, the situation there is much more terrible than we are used to on <coughs> the desktop, especially when it comes to like drivers for all the components of your medical device, because you have a, like, a massive sock that incorporates many devices, and you have one driver in a binary form that works for one version of Linux, and well, as far as I'm aware, that's all terrible. So I actually don't, from what I know, I don't see it being a worthwhile investment for us just yet to explore that direction. Just because you need to be very well, strong financially, say, to be able to talk to these vendors of these socks and to get hold of these drivers and all well, source code and build scripts and all. And, uh, from what I know, it's just, it's close to possible. Thank you. So, one more question. Okay, then, thank you. Thank Give you. a warm thank you for uh, Koga. <laughs> so, if the message wasn't clear, and you said already, try it out, try it GNOME. So, oh, sure. <laughs> uh, uh, hello. Uh, my question, uh, uh, my experience is in you know, 3.5 is uh, pretty good. Uh, but uh, I have some, I have just have one question, uh, not questions, just uh, suggestions. And, uh, you know, uh, the application code, you can customize one folder that drag these uh, uh, applications into the one page, right? And I hope that, uh, every hope that uh, we can do that application uh, in just uh, uh, in the application <coughs> preview, we follow you. We can just uh, drag in the drag one application into the different folders, not just a customize it in the um, software and like that. Oh, right. oh, that does not work. Mm -hmm. yeah, it, uh, that is, uh, uh, you know, we just uh, customize the different uh, categories in the software and like that. Right. But I really think that I think well. We make it easier that we just in the application order, drag the application to that order. That should be much easier than the Right. Yeah, yeah maybe you need to show me. Thank you very much. Thank you. So thank you. So um, the next speakers will be for, for the Fedora uh, Spotcon. Uh, first of all, I want to say it has been six years for GNOME to be here back. It is also for uh, actually for Fedora the same. It has been, I think, three years ago we had our first Fedora Activity Day in the same venue. So it's kind of like a reunion. So, but uh, uh, welcome to the stage, uh, Giri and Jaroslav. So Jaroslav you have already seen before. Giri is actually on Fansco for Fedora. That's the Investor Steering Committee, and they will be talking about what Fedora next will be. 